Hello YouTube! In this video I wanted to go over what I did to my Beretta 92. Um, it seems like I can't put it down basically. So in the past, uh, if you've seen my videos, uh, what I've done with my 92FS is reshaped the trigger guard. That was one thing. I then checkered the front strap and the rear strap. Then I've decided to convert to uh, a G lever as opposed to FS lever. Then I went and changed my 92 FS profile to Vertec. As you can see, no hump. And uh, I checkered the rear. And then lastly, uh, or most recently, I've uh, decided to convert it to D. So my 92 FS became D. D is uh, a double action only version of Beretta 92. Uh, as you can see, I actually got a 92D slide, um, which doesn't have any safety levers in it. Reason why is because the gun is double action only, so there is no sear, there is no decocking, um, and there is no safe uh, position outside of hammer down. So, I just came back from the range actually. Uh, the reason why I decided to do this conversion is to practice my uh, trigger pull. Because with double action only, uh, you end up having to pull all the way, uh, double action basically, all the way back and then release all the way forward and for every shot you pull double action. As opposed to the trigger sitting in single action and uh, making it, you know, first shot double action every consecutive shot single action. Uh, what the conversion is like, it's basically you just take out the sear. Um, but I also took out the decock lever inside because uh, there's nothing to decock. So one thing I wanted to show you is how this D functions. We're gonna check first that the gun is clear. <clears throat> As you see Every time I rack the slide, the hammer comes back. It follows the slide. Hopefully you can see that. That's how the D functions. Every trigger pull is double action. And even if I hold the trigger back because there is no sear, the hammer comes back. So in order for me to fire again, I would have to release the trigger all the way out here and fire again. So, the one thing I forgot to do is make me a D uh, hammer, a dedicated D hammer, because the, there's no need to have the um, spur here on the hammer because there is no cocking it. So, uh, the D hammer is supposed to be basically flush with the slide. And I can see that my ejector is kind of protruding a little bit. Um, so I don't know if I'll if I'll be touching that as well. Probably not. So I'll just make it flush with the slide. And uh, since this is a uh, Beretta Elite 2 hammer, as you can see there's a lot of meat removed from inside the hammer body. I'm going to use my original 92FS hammer to convert to D, basically filing off the uh, spur in the back. So that's what we'll do. But if, if essentially, I mean, that's, that's what the conversion is, uh, the D conversion. You just take out the sear. Okay, first things first, we're going to break it apart. So we'll clean that later. Oh, by the way, I'm using a, one of these shock buffers. It's actually not bad. I like it. <clears throat> so now we need to take out or take off the grips so we can get to the hammer. So now we're going to push the spin out all the way. 
Okay, now it cleared the lanyard loop. So there's that. There's our spring. Now we can take the hammer out. So now what I'm going to do is keeping the strut still in there, I'm going to replace that original hammer. <coughs> I'm going to replace my spring. Make sure that it goes over the hammer strut. I think it did. Okay, we're going to capture it just like that, just a little bit. Let's verify that the hammer works. Okay, slide this back on and we can see how that hammer protrudes, right? So now what we're going to do is mark a line on our hammer using a scribe right here. And we'll assume that that line will continue right here. Now we're going to do the same on this side as far as we can because the ejector is blocking us a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, now we got that line. Now we can take the gun apart again, take out this hammer, and we're going to work on the hammer. Now we have those lines which I hope you can see. Okay. There's that line. There's that line. So, now we're going to cut the hammer, cut the excess material off, and shape it to the line so that we'll have a nice, uh, nice D hammer. Alright, I'm going to use a hacksaw. I think uh, the hammer was actually case hardened uh, or surface hardened um, not through hardened because uh, my hacksaw was struggling a little bit and the part got really really hot um, but I was able to cut through it then uh, later when I was filing I also confirmed that uh, I can confirm that I think the outer sides of the hammer uh, are hardened <laughs> So this is what I mean. Uh, when I was filing, I was uh, noticing, well, actually, because I knew or because of what I've just uh, experienced with uh, Hacksaw, I wasn't going to use one of my better files. So I used one of the one of the files that I kind of don't care about, um, thinking that if it gets destroyed, that's fine. Anyway, uh, as I was filing, I was noticing that as I was uh, kind of getting or filing across, um, and if I lean the file a little bit, I was noticing that it would start to skid over. So it definitely looks like the outer surface of the hammer is hardened, or at least that's that that's what it looked like to me. I may be completely wrong here. So in any case, uh, as you as you see, what I'm trying to do is get. Uh, well, you don't see the line very well, but um, I, I'm trying to shape. Uh, the hammer uh, surface closer to the lines that we scribed earlier. And that's all this process is. Um, that's that's where I was checking um, how close I get to the line. <clears throat> Once I got there, basically I started uh, working on the overall shape. Now I just need to sand it down. When I was sanding, I was actually uh, using, uh, I believe it was 120 and then 220 grit. I didn't, uh, I didn't go for a high polish or anything like that. And I think uh, 
well at this point I was thinking that I'm, all I'm gonna do is just cold blue it a little bit just kind of one time or one application of cold blue and that should be enough um, and because I can always I actually have a different solution uh, I was gonna try the Mark Lee Express blue uh, so this was just kind of let's protect the steel um, for a little bit just using cold blue and then later I'm going to go back and and blue it uh, uh, better I guess using a better method and producing a deeper blue so <clears throat> I started uh, checker or I started uh, sending uh, a little bit crosswise as well uh, or cross-directional just so just so I can get most of the marks out but Again, uh, using 220 as the final sanding, I wasn't actually going after a completely polished surface. And still it ended up looking pretty decent. Um, I also didn't use the backer, as you can see, the entire time, uh, because that surface is uh, okay being a little bit rounded off, <coughs> in my opinion at least. But in the end, I think it ended, out, ended up uh, looking pretty decent. All right, so I cold blued uh, the hammer a little bit just so it's slightly protected. I wasn't trying to go for deep blue. I would have used something else. But uh, that's what it looks like now. Just like a D hammer. So <clears throat> now we're gonna put it in. Side. Pretty much about the same as on this side. So now this Beretta truly is D. So As you can see, everything works. So, that's how you modify your hammer, I guess, to spurless D. Thank you for watching.